Thanks, Gustav, and thanks for that very clear uh, um, presentation and sharing about the home range size. I know that it puzzled me a lot um, in the past. <laughs> we always said that we had to have grid sizes at least 400 kilometers squared for snow leopards um, yeah. to cover the home range size of, uh, of the snow leopard. But, but actually, we're just looking at uh, site use often, so they do. Exactly. It's okay to have it smaller. So everyone, we'll, we'll have another question and answer period at the end, Kustub, right? So feel free, yeah. if you do have questions, um, we will get back to it. So you can either write in the chat or save it for later. But for now, we're going to try to uh, make occupancy more applied and practical. And we're actually going to go through and survey our own animals. Um, so we want you to be ready, have a pen and paper, because this is very interactive. Also have um, your, you know, your be awake, um, maybe a coffee in hand um, to get ready because uh, you you might need to focus. So um, the game is that we're going to be estimating occupancy um, of our species of eights. Um, so our species is a new uh, new species that Kustub has recently discovered um, in the high altitudes of Central Asia, and it is the species eight. Um, the species eight, however, is very well camouflaged and is very cryptic in its environment of nines. Um, so we have to be very, very awake and try to capture and observe this species. And this is why we have decided to use occupancy because it's such a cryptic species and we're never sure if a survey site has a species or not. And to do this, um, we have our study area. So all in black is our study area, as you can see. And we are have our sampling units, just as Kustu just presented. We have sample, spatial sampling units of these grid cells. And we're going to sample these each of these units randomly. In this case, we are going to do full coverage. We, it'll depend on time, but we think we might get to full coverage of the whole area and sample all of our sites. Um, but a little bit more about that now. So how are we going to do this? So each participant is going to be our replicates. So you are a replicate for surveying each site. And you're going to have 20, uh, 10 to 20 seconds to conduct your survey. So everyone has the same amount of time to conduct their survey. And, um, and we're, we're going to look at each grid cell randomly across the landscape and so that it is representative of our whole study area. But we must advise. This is a really a, a survey effort as, as we do you know, in practice of honesty. Um, if you did not see the species eight, please do not just say that you did see it um, because that will obviously influ influence our survey. Um, so if you did not um, see it, please remember this is, I did not see it's a zero. If you did honestly see species eight, then you can write one because we're not really dealing with false presences today. And we'll talk about that. Some occupancy models can deal with this, but we're trying to stay with the simple uh, model at this stage. Also, there might be a case when you're just really tired and you weren't able to survey it is okay to not always survey and we can deal with this. You don't need to always have surveyed and then just note that you did not have time to survey. So Kustub, I think we're ready, right? Um, to do our uh, first survey. I think, so. uh, yeah, can you hear me, right? Yeah, uh, yes. I okay. can hear you. Yeah, so I think we're good to go. So please note that as Justine said in the next, uh, the moment she changes the slide, there will be a timer going on top Whenever the moment you see your the the eight in that sampling unit, please on that paper record the time. And what we will, I mean, you want to do it on a paper, you can do that, or there is a file we have shared with you all. Justine, can we share um, that again, please? Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me um, go to the chat. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Yeah. So in the chat, we actually have a Google Doc that we we're collecting some additional data, so I've shared in the chat, on how much time it took everyone to see the eight, if you did you see the eight. So can you please open that uh, sheet? Um, and there we'll be recording how, um, if you saw the eight, this is only in the case if you did see eight, how long it took you to see that eight. Um, so have, uh, please open yeah, that. Yeah, and one more uh, point that 
more than half the sites are probably they have no eight in them so remember that as well there may not be any eight so if you don't see eight don't worry because there are at least 20 30 uh, sites probably i don't i know out of 30 i don't know how many but there are quite a few sites out of the 30 sites that we will be sampling which don't have any eights if you don't see it don't worry you, you might be surveying a unit which has which actually has no eight in them You told them the secret, Kostu. <laughs> I wanted to keep that so they would keep looking. <laughs> but no. yeah, there yeah, are indications but, but... <laughs> where we do want our species not to be present. Otherwise, you know, it would be like Kostu said. Why do we need occupancy? Exactly. There are some samples that don't have our species. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. is everyone ready? Get your pen ready. It's okay to put it on your paper for now. Okay, and we're going to start. Oh, sorry. <laughs> This, is <not> starting. <laughs> This is just to show you how the data is collected. So you are observer one, for example, and we're going to survey grid A one, and you're going to write your information whether you saw it. If you saw it, it would be, for example, a one. If you didn't see it, it would be a zero. If you didn't survey, it would be an A. And your colleague will be observer two, so they're providing also information. And the next colleague is observer three. So you can see that each person in this class is a replicate for each survey uh, sa a sample unit. Just we just wanted to uh, reiterate that. So now get ready, <laughs> steady, go. So it will be automatic. Ten seconds. Look for your eight. Okay, the time is up. Um, uh, please, Kustub, if you can start the poll. Please uh, respond whether you saw the eight in your sample. If you weren't surveying, that's perfectly fine. Um, we can we deal with that. Um, it's okay to have no data for some of our replicates. Great, we have a few more that need to include the data. We'll just have 30 seconds, so four more seconds. Any of the last three people want to report? Okay, Kustub, should we continue? Oh, there's another one that came in. Shall we end the poll, Kustub? Yes, sorry, Justin, just give me one second. I'll write them down so that we can tally these. Uh, There were no seventeen. Yes, three. Ah, there is three now. Okay, and okay. There we go. Right. We have the data. Thank you. I'll relaunch can, it now. Yeah, we can share them quickly, but we won't share. We don't need to share. Okay. Are you ready for? So now we're going to sample our next unit. This is another random unit in our study area. Are you ready? And here we go. Some of our survey areas, you have ten seconds. Some you have. 20. Thank you for surveying the second area. Uh, Kustub, feel free to give the poll. Yeah. There we go. Remember, if you did detect it, please note on your paper the time it took you to detect the species eight. Thank you. This is uh, coming in. Seventeen did not see it. One saw it. Two were not looking. No, nineteen did not see it. Oh, nineteen did not see it. One okay. did see it. Two That's didn't. fine. Okay, I'm ending it now. Please, those who saw it, please put it on the paper. How much time it took you to see it? And we go to the next one, Justine. Here we go. This is sample site B four. Oh, and you have more time because you you were <clears throat> great. So hopefully, with the twenty seconds, you had more time to survey this unit. And. Uh So Ursa, it's not automatic. Uh, you will have to enter the data. Um, 
you can do it later you don't need to do it now just on your paper just write down how much time it took you i have uh, launched the poll kustu oh thank you justine <laughs> sorry i forgot about it no it's okay <laughs> i realized i could do it too um yeah please feel free to note your surveys some interesting wow, a lot of people saw it here yeah 13 of them saw it five didn't see it one did not survey okay 5131 all right next please you're walking up a mountain <laughs> maybe or maybe do see the eight species <laughs> your colleagues are behind you also surveying yeah again you get more time <laughs> yeah you get more time <laughs> great Mm -hmm. Oh, the results are pretty sure. We yeah, have interesting. Great. Okay, nobody did not do it. Well done. People were wonderful this time. Okay, we have two people detecting it. Great. Next, please. Just walk ten kilometers. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, read on. There we go. Oh wow! Everyone's pretty certain with this grid. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Done. Everyone. Interesting. But um, it's very yeah. nice to see everyone's. been watching this time great but see remember one thing this is again one of the key things about the flexibility of occupancy methods if you are for some reason are unable to survey it in ideal in an ideal world it won't change the results so the best part is if you're not surveying you say that you were not surveying and we take that data as not available and that's equally valuable as our zeros and ones so Yeah so in other words you do not need to survey each sample the same number of replicates some samples you can survey 10 with 10 uh, surveys while others you can survey with 15 and that's okay um yeah. but Kustu will talk about how that it does affect your estimate though yeah. and and, and remember uh, yes and just remember that here also if you get tired or you get uh, overwhelmed you can take a break feel free this is a fun exercise you can take take a little break here yes or so it's perfectly <laughs> fine <laughs> next one sorry <laughs> no you can still talk it's a good distraction for them <laughs> oh well i don't think how much they're going to appreciate the distraction <laughs> oh you think oh, that's a long one distractions. there's a longer one come on this one should have some detections okay time out and relaunch polling now Please go ahead. E three. How many detected? How many did not detect? Okay. Some of you guys took breaks this time. That's. <laughs> uh, we had someone who saw. Okay. Whoever saw it, a uh, small request. Please put your number on the, uh, on the sheet or on a paper so that you can write it down later. How much time it took you to detect? Eight. in sampling unit e3 okay next one please okay here we go next one we ended the poll here we had 1612 kustu yeah 161 oh 1612 i did 1412 sorry yeah okay next i hope everyone's feeling okay um that the surveying is not too too mind boggling Rob Zahab was busy tweeting. <laughs> so here we're relaunching. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Oh, nice. Good detection this time.
Great. Okay. So we've got fifteen five one Kustu. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, here we go. A few more. D five. Sample unit D five. Are you sure you, there are any eights in any of these grids, Krista? <laughs> <laughs> no one's observing any of them. Well, we have we have reasonable detection so far. Uh, A one had, A six had, B four had, C four had. Yeah, there are not many who which have got, which is what's getting me a little worried that <laughs> we might be getting false positives. Let's see, we'll see that. Okay, hundred percent did not see um, twenty or not. So. Twenty. Okay. Next. This was D5, right, Justine? Um, yeah. I don't remember. I so Ursa, if we use, uh, yeah, we could have, but then it would have taken just so much more effort to create those, no? Eights and nines was easier to, to, to make. <laughs> But yes, next time we will, if you're available, we'd like to take your help in making those puppies and kittens. <laughs> okay, great. So the survey is going in. Everyone surveyed this time. That's great. We got 13, 14, 10. 15, 10. 15, 10. Okay. Everyone surveyed. Great. Nice. It's a few more. This is B2 now. Great. Um, so oh, sorry. We relaunch, right? <clears throat> oh, many people are, <clears throat> more people did not survey. A little break. Six, seven, five, right? Oh, uh, seven, eight, five. Seven, eight, five. Okay. And here we go. We only have a few more, I think, and then we'll be done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Helena. <laughs> okay, there we go. <coughs> but you guys are spotting them. It's pretty good the way you guys are spotting it. Wow, okay, everyone's written uh, 20, 20, 100% said no. 25, 25 no's and... Okay, next one, B3. <laughs> I'm loving the comments coming in, B3. Sorry. No worries. Okay, again, lots of confidence that this one did not have surveys. <laughs> okay, 21, one, Kustu. 21 and then zeros, right? Yeah. Uh, and one. So, uh, zero. one hasn't surveyed. Yeah, one hasn't surveyed. Survey has started again. Give me a break. <laughs> C1. We're almost there, I suspect. Oops, everyone saw it here. People have gotten better or what? <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. 2.19.0. Ah. And the survey continues <laughs> e5 got 20 seconds this time yeah longer oh, wow look at the detection rates oh 
Wow, okay. So um, 20, 0, 2101. Yeah. Okay, C2. Oh, 22nd, good one. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> okay, everyone is pretty sure. Nine, eleven, one. Ten, eleven, one. Okay. Okay. Next one. <clears throat> Are you sure, Kostov, it doesn't go on a loop? So we're going to be serving for hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing them as well as we go. We have 30, right? So we're we are still somewhere. Yeah. We launch then... poll. Oh. 18.11.1. I think we have around eight left. Is that right, Kusu? I think so. I think so. I have no memory. I, I jumbled them up and then I've forgotten which one was the last. <laughs> Two. Everyone is pretty sure. Okay, uh, 2001. Okay. This is the last. Is it? Last few surveys. No, no, last. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a hope. <laughs> hope. That this book will end at one point. <laughs> but um, I'm sure these are all the Snow Leopard researchers. They're, they're, they're very well aware of the exhaustions of surveys. And this is nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, the poll is zero, zero. 21 zeros, right? Uh, which one was this? A5. A5. 2100. Zero, zero. Gotcha. Next. Twenty seconds is good. <laughs> I'm loving the comments there. I think Justin, we should make use of these comments. <laughs> Rav Sahab says serving phyloscope of species is easier than this. Well, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> okay, have we done? 1470? Yeah, 1470. E6. But um, we've received a lot of variations. Some people see them, some people don't. So it's um, yeah. it's just it highlights how it, this is important information to collect. That this species occupancy might be the yeah. appropriate method. For yeah. this species. And the other good thing here, Justine, is that uh, seventeen zero four. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. seventeen zero four. The other good thing, Justine, here is that we have so many surveyors. So our detection probability, if you use all of them, will be fairly good. And we'll, we'll play around a little bit with the, with the variation next time when we come to the analysis. It's very exciting though. Great, 2100, 2200. Okay, I think it's the last few, isn't you said it? said that a few minutes ago, Justine. I know, I wonder, <laughs> it's not going on a loop. Um, B1.
causes psychological damage. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay, seven. Seven fourteen one. one. Okay. I think this might be the last one. Hopefully, decent. <laughs> Again, hopefully. Come on. Okay, 2200. Okay. Sorry. Oop. <laughs> Maybe we'll do two more, Kustub, and then yes. anyway, since it's random Kustub. sampling. Four, five, six, seven. yeah. I mean, it's, we're fine for our area. Yeah. And fatigue. Yeah, we might have to monitor fatigue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 2200. Great. 22. Okay. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. 2200. Zero, zero. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Let's say we can say this is the last area. Okay. We do. Oh, wow. Okay. What's happened here? Uh, okay. 17 say yes and 3 say no. 18, 18, yes. 18 zero. 19, okay. Yes, no. okay, okay, well, let's, um, there were more go coming in. Okay, so we didn't do all 30, um, but it doesn't matter because we randomly surveyed. I think we skipped the last five. Sorry, Christo, but we randomly surveyed. So it's okay. Really <laughs> for our study area. Um, uh, but we had variable uh, effort as well because some of our surveyors took rests, which was great. And we can include that in our analysis. And what we we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this data and, um, and look at it in the next class. But maybe Kustub, you can share the, what the data looks like by sharing your screen, just to give everyone a... Um, I have it on paper, sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> It'll take me five minutes to do, put it together though. Okay, but, um, but no worries. Then may um, Kustu feel free to to take over, or are we gonna do this, or you want to go from? Yeah, I, I was just wondering. Uh, maybe this is a point where we can quickly. So you guys have just helped with a real survey. If you could think of what are the more than assumptions, I think we can broaden it a little bit. What are your observations? What did you observe? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, I, I, I know the, those comments are crazy. And yes, it's caused psychological damage. Completely agree with that. And yes, maybe not so fun as we called, we thought it will be. But um, on, a, on an analytical scale or, or from the analytical perspective, did you observe anything happening uh, over time? Did you observe something uh, that you would like to mention here? And what our hope was that maybe this is where we could have just reviewed the key assumptions uh, of the occupancy methods uh, at that time. Yes. Uh, so there we go. So I think uh, nines looked like eights, of course. That was the whole point, Ranjini. We wanted the eights to be not so <laughs> easy. Survey fatigue bias creeping in. And that's very interesting, Rub. Now, uh, so Justine, maybe we can, uh, you want me to type or you would like to type? Uh, I can these? type if you can read it. Huh? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, so I think one of them is, um, yeah, nine looks like eight. That's Ranjini, of course. So we can just say that um, <laughs> species is difficult to detect. Yeah, the, uh, species. There is survey fatigue, which is a very interesting point. Uh, though if I may add in here, you all became experts towards the end. You all, if you look at the simple number of detections, and I'll read those out. 3, 1, 13, 2, 1, 5, 10, 8, 19, 11, 14, 19. 
So there is a possibility that at one point you believed that you were getting tired, but your, your eyes were getting trained. So what was probably happening as we went further with surveys, your detection improved. And, and it's a possibility. It can happen in many scenarios when you're out surveying, uh, surveying wildlife, you start training your eyes and they start getting better at detecting animals. And it is, that's not a, uh, that's not a, uh, a new uh, feature. It happens all the time. So you have, there is, there was a, a learning curve involved. So your detection maybe not, wasn't constant. It was lower and then you got better, better and better. At least the pattern shows so. We don't know, we will test it, okay? So the point I'm trying to say here is that please think of what else may have happened because what you are saying right now are, we will be able to test these as hypothesis whether our data, data uh, uh, meets that hypothesis or not. And the point that Rob, you mentioned, it's a very good point. Maybe we were getting tired. So in that case, the detection should have gone down or maybe it was the opposite of it that the detection got better. So let's, there is a factor by which over time, the later surveys had better detections, right? So we will be able to test that. And that's a very cool thing here. Um, <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, okay, over time. Poop Dorji says applied different observation angles, nothing. <laughs> no, okay, I, sorry, go ahead, Justine. No, no, I'm seeing a few of them are talking about um, how the smaller screens might reduce detection. So I think a few Fantastic. have, uh, have Fantastic. And there's different, uh, and I think maybe that links to Dorji's uh, different people have different abilities to maybe see yes. it or to have yes. some people have techniques while other people just are randomly looking. Um, yes. So maybe there are, you know, uh, differences between detectors, right? Yes. Detect detectors, yes. Um, Yes. So we, we and the, go for it, Christian. Yeah, no, and the point that uh, uh, someone's saying about screens, so it's a possible covariate, right? Now, if you have a small screen or you have an old computer with less contrast, maybe you had difficulties spotting it, or maybe it's just the other way around. If you had more contrast, you were getting kind of uh, zoned out, and that's why lower brightness or lower contrasts were working. Now, for us to be able to test this hypothesis, what we will need is some data from you. So after this exercise, today's uh, uh, session, if you could, on that table that, I ha that we have shared, just make a separate row and mention the screen size. That would be one covariate. Mention your name if you want to, because it's totally up to you. If you want to mention your name or uh, no, that's fine. But if you were using a phone screen or if you were using, um, you know, uh, old computer, new computer, maybe you want to mention that, but let's use only screen size for now, right? Because I'm sure for with bigger screens, it might have been easier uh, than on phone screens or smaller computers. So please mention whatever you think is a possible covariate. And let's say this is a, a screen uh, sc screen. I, in fact, I will add a new column, a new row there where I just mention the size of the screen. We will test it, whether it had an effect or not. Um, teamwork truly matters. Well done, Nilofar. That's exactly the point we are trying to make here as well. Now, this is a very unlikely scenario where you have 20 replicates, right? You have 20 replicates, each of them very high you know, uh, quality, right? So people, uh, we had 20 people detecting. It's almost considered it like this, that in a sampling unit, you have 20 transits, right? And that doesn't always happen. Yes, you might want to ha make it happen, but it doesn't always happen, but still, it was a very, very good effort on that front. Uh, and yes, when you have more people, then your chances of missing out so in other words, you know, and, and the point you, Nilofa, you make it so much valuable. 
mathematically if you think about it then you go this way the chances of one person not seeing an eight is much more than the chance of 10 people missing that eight so if there are 10 people looking there is less chance that they will miss out you know the the i mean in in, in biology we talk about you know the herding uh, tendencies as well and very similar principles apply there as well why do animals get into herds? Why do prey species get into herds? The chances of one individual getting picked up become low. So you, you're basically dividing your risk. Here again, in a way, you have, you have divided the risk of missing out. And that's a very important point here. Um, teamwork matters. False positives since I didn't want to go back to my boss with zeros. That's a problem. Uh, and that's, again, something that often happens, especially if the managers are mean. <laughs> you, this is a very important point, Rab Nawaz. It's something that uh, is often a challenge. In fact, uh, I started my uh, my wildlife career in a in a in a uh, in a forest reserve where it was very difficult to train people that good and no data is good data, and that's a very important training lesson that should go in. And I think we, uh, we must invest time and resources and energy in A, helping people understand at least generally how methods work. B, making them realize that if you bring back a zero, it's data for me. It's not no data, it's good data, right? So no data is good data is a very important lesson that we must ourselves learn and also try to uh, send it further to our teams who are out there collecting data because when people come back with false positives, you just add an unnecessary parameter into the data analysis and it's not it's not fun to deal with. It, it creates it creates problems and as I mentioned earlier, we are not dealing with false positives today and if there are false positives, it's going to mess up our result. Mm. So, sorry. No, I just wanted to add if it makes you think about what method you use, for example, with genetics, um, maybe you want to do species ID to be yeah. sure. Otherwise, you get many scats of foxes and you say it's snow leopards, for example, and that's a false positive. So there are ways to think about how to reduce false positives in Absolutely. how you survey. Um, and the way you ask through questionnaire surveys, I'm sure Abhishek will share how he dealt with the issue of false positives when asking people if they had seen a snow yeah. leopard. Yeah. Now, Karma has a very good point, uh, which was one of the most obvious uh, uh, covariates we had included in this analysis, in, in this exercise, that with more time, you have more chances of seeing the eight. So those, those sessions or those surveys, which had 20 seconds, probably we had a slightly better opportunity to detect. So more effort improves the detection probability, right? And that's a very good point you've said. Muzaffar says screen size matters. I think we've already captured that point, uh, Justine. Yeah. Mm, there was background noise. Well, there'll always <laughs> be background noise. <laughs> there'll always be background noise. Someone will be, you know, there'll, there'll be people doing other things and there'll be other people not not even concerned about what what all, what on earth you're doing. I think that's, that's part of the noise, which is good. Uh, part of a realistic scenario, which is good. And I think Justine didn't mince any words in saying, let's distract them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, survey start point and location of species matters. Um, okay, that's a good point. Um, uh, Pub, if you could please explain this a little further, maybe because it's an important point, we'd like to understand it uh, more clearly what you're trying to say. Uh, Chloe, Chloe says, uh, but time effect is annoying, especially you had other factors that affect either presence or, okay, Chloe, can you also please elaborate a little bit, uh, because it's another important point where what might look like a positive covariate might turn out to be a negative or, or a positively correlated covariate might turn out to be a negatively correlated covariate. And, and these things do happen. So please, if you could also write more about it, I'll come down. We have lots of messages. Mm, detecting sites and distance matter too. Um, okay. 
um <laughs> muzaffar's hypothesis is smaller the screen less is the detection good point muzaffar we put it that and chloe has seconded the hypothesis so that's very good habitat condition ah <laughs> okay urva sharma says the habitat situation what you now again that's a very good point urma urva if you can put it there as a so we will add that another covariate and we will call it internet connection let's call it as a covariate because yes if you if by the time the screen became clear it was gone you didn't have enough opportunity so internet connectivity was a possible covariate we might need to uh, to have each of you send your connection speed you can just say good poor oh, poor moderate good very good or um, if you are interested enough give give us the actual bandwidth uh but there are that's another possible covariate we can test um so uh urva just one key point there it's a micro habitat condition that habitat is not affecting remember that what you are saying if the internet connection is bad it is not affecting eight eight is still there it's just that you're not seeing it right so there is a slight difference in yeah there's a slight difference in in fact there's a big difference in what affects the species and what affects the detector so what you're talking about habitat condition is not affecting your eights eights are happily living there in in the nines it's you who were unable to detect them so remember that point because we'll come back to it it's a very very important point that you've mentioned here consistency of each surveyor's detection and reporting honesty i think that's a key point just in started with equipment yes i think that will uh, be similar to the point we were talking about uh, screen yeah, muzaffar was using a mobile i didn't ask you to <laughs> you could have used a big screen by the way <laughs> but that's fine i hope muzaffar you're okay because yes it must have been a strain on the eye um <laughs> okay this is a see you were saying it was not fun rob come on this, these are hilarious comments it's such just such a fun exercise and just to read the comments is so fun okay i think interest and patience matter a lot yes mohammed uh, that's a very important point patience does pay off uh but um yes okay i i don't think we need to add resource limitations in case time make detection harder excellent point ranjini uh and that actually correlates to our uh, the other the covariate that we are going to look at is how much time could you put in a particular survey right so the more time you have to uh, put do the survey the greater chances of detecting your species improves your life all right distraction by comments of course decrease efficacy uh see okay now chloe that's a very interesting point and uh, just in i'm okay right if we talk a little bit about these things with the the fun Yeah, but we don't have that uh, much time. We don't just, have too much time. We only have forty minutes left. We have forty minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but see, we, okay, we can. What we will then do is, uh, we, okay, let, let's do these because they are very important points, and I think they will. We will come back to these points next when we come to the analysis part, right? So I think they they're very useful. Um, and sorry, Rocky and everyone, uh, but. Uh, Uh, but what you're saying is uh, distraction by comments decrease effic efficiency now chloe this is a very interesting point P look at it this way were we as distractors start consistent throughout the survey or did we only start distracting you towards the end of it or in the middle or towards the beginning or we were just randomly distracting you if there was a pattern in our distraction then it's something you might want to explore and put as a as a covariate as long as there is no pattern in what we were doing you might just ignore it it's just it might just increase noise it will in, in, in bring in noise into the data but as long as it is not along a pattern you can you can treat it as something that may or may not have an effect and that's a very important point to remember because when you're doing modeling you will never have 100% factors that affect your species or your detection only god makes the best the complete model of everything right we don't 
what we do is we try to make a simplification of phenomenon happening by models and the what we do is we simplify complicated complex uh, scenarios and in this case what we are doing is if there is a pattern that you are detecting or you you observing then you put it as a covariate to test otherwise we just treat it okay one of those number of distractions um okay similar similar okay i'll just not take more than a couple of minutes here uh, another thing um to note is that everyone conducted the survey separately so you guys didn't influence each other so there was independence between surveys um, which is also key for occupancy right i mean i guess we did sometimes report results before the end <laughs> Sometimes Gustav, so we reduced independence for the last people putting their polls. Exactly, yeah. that's what I'm wondering. I'm 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 not very sure about that point, Justine. <laughs> well, there's some results which came out towards the end. I'm like, huh? Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly there's a flurry of ones, right? Yeah. So again, uh, it's fine. It's perfectly okay. But uh, that's an important point for you to keep in mind, which is why we've also requested if you could please put the times and. this is not a this is not a commentary or an analysis of how good or bad you are at detecting eights it's absolutely not not that it's an it's an exercise which will help us understand the mechanism in which occupancy estimations methods work out in the field um okay so i think uh, where we are oh, so just seen let's stop here uh and uh, we can yep i'll try to start my second chat if you're okay <laughs>